Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This podcast, uh, we have our dear guest from Middlebury College. Speaking of which, this podcast will be literally about Middlebury College, um, specifically Middlebury Networking, how we met, internships, gap year, slash early graduation, and everything in that scope. So before going forward, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Mauricio Moreno. I'm from LA. I am, I guess, a junior. Um, we'll talk about like gap year later. So I have one year left at Middlebury. I'm a double major, so molecular biology biochem, doubling with economics, and I also have a math minor. I'm a posse scholar. You know, we can maybe touch on that a little later. Um, I don't know. I think that's pretty much it about right. me. Yeah, yeah, from yeah, LA, South to... Central. Let's go. Okay, cool. Not go Panthers. <laughs> um, I mean, I like repping my city, my neighborhood. But yes, go Panthers. <laughs> Very valid. Um, so I guess one of the commonalities that we have is we are both from LA, except the fact that I'm a fake LA person. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about how we met first, and then we can talk further about middleware networking, because I think that sort of intertwines with um, mm -hmm. how we met. So I, I think we first met at this event that was hosted by Casey. Why am I saying Casey? It's Korean, oh, CASA. CASA, yeah. Korean American Student Association. And I don't think neither of us were really participating in that <laughs> club for a good reason. I mean, and I'll be honest. I'm okay. I'm I'm not Korean or Korean American, but it just seemed like a cool network of people. And like, I don't know. And what attracted me for that event was that it was with uh, one of the like a board of trustees member, right? Right, right. Um, who who is Korean American, and so I I was like, oh shoot, they're gonna have a chance to talk to her. Like I want to hear, like from her perspective and how they get involved with the school and stuff like that. So we did meet at that event. Yeah, and I think it was at the oh shit, I forgot. It was a French house. I think it's our oh, oh. yes. Okay, not my memory going all the way, but uh, we did meet there, and I think we hung out a lot during that day with like a few other people and then that night you're like oh wait I remember your YouTube channel <laughs> was it was that? it that night I don't I think, think it was that it was, night oh, I, was it no it was summer? it was it was so during the summer ah. I stayed I stayed on campus during the summer working uh as an intern with the admissions office and you were staying on to do some research mm -hmm. right with uh Professor Somers I believe yeah and so we had some mutual friends, Winta, for example. And so I think we we're having like a movie night or something. And yeah. so you came and I was there and I was like, oh, I met you at that one event. I also think I've seen one of your YouTube channels is like, or videos. It's like one of the only videos that shows up when you look up at a very college, like dorm, yeah. like dorm tour. Gotcha. But I do remember it was also at the Chateau. But I no, that was in the that was in Forest Forest oh. East Lounge, but similar vibes. Oh, okay, like okay, the room, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. I'm trying to remember where Forest Lounge is. <laughs> this is why I have to visit the campus. Yes, <laughs> I think it's been two years. Oh my god, it's been two years. <laughs> it's been almost two years since I. It's been almost two years. The That's wild. Yeah. We'll see when I go. Anyway, <laughs> so, okay, I think this leads to our topic of not mid networking, but I guess internships, um, mm -hmm. research internships, and how we. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Mercy, I think you are having uh, some research internship in bio. Mm -hmm. You want to tell us how you got that? You know what kind yeah. of. Yeah. Should I? Should I? Should I also mention about the internship I had last fall as well? Should I talk oh, yeah. about yeah, that yeah. gap as okay? So I decided I need some time off, you know, from school, you know, Zoom, university, not it, you know. So a lot of screen fatigue. And during my junior year, I also added on that um, 
that second major, econ. And so I just thought I needed some time to de-stress and like refocus, um, you know, re-energize. So I decided to take a semester off and that was for the fall last year. And so as I was looking for internships, I was like, dang, I don't, I can't find a lot of stuff. I was, uh, you know, kind of trying to scramble around. I'm like, you know, if things don't work out, then I'll have to, mm. you know, continue with school. And so it was through um, the Handshake platform, which a lot of colleges use, including Middlebury. And it has like a big database of like internships in all different kinds of fields that you can apply to. And that's how I found out about like wine internships. So my internship that I got was working as a lab intern for this winery called Costa Brown. Um, it's part of the Duckhorn portfolio. It's like a, it's actually a very large, like really luxury brand of wine. Um, it's up in uh, Sebastopol, which is in Sonoma County, along Sonoma Coast fantastic experience. I was there from all of August, um, August, September, October. Um, yeah. So about two and a half, three months. And like, it was really awesome because I got to apply the things that I learned with my microbiology, um, kind of classes on like fermentation, um, when it came to like choosing what kind of yeast to, um, inoculate wines with, because although, our specific winery didn't inoculate or like pretty much we didn't introduce yeast. We only used the yeast that was native. We also made wines for a different company, a migration that did require that and just kind of maintaining it. So it was awesome. Got a lot of really nice lab equipment to run like enzymatics, run um, analyses on different types of nutrients like potassium, nitrates. Uh, we had auto titrators. It was, it was a fantastic experience. Um, for the most part, there was just one negative experience. You know, we don't have to talk about that right now. Um, but it was really good. And, you know, I think that they, 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 they really liked and um, said that if there were other people from Middlebury. I think that they, they felt that I made a good impression to like give oh. them recommendations that there are other students who want to do a similar experience. They would love to take on other people. So that was awesome. Um, and then some stuff went down. Um, I lost a parent last year. And so I had to, you know, think about if I wanted to go back for the spring or not. And I decided to take the spring off. Um, so I've just been back here, but I will return to Middlebury in just a short, a uh, few short weeks. Yes. Um, and I'll be working in um, Professor Dave Allen's lab. He is a like a biology professor in Middlebury. Super awesome. <clears throat> I believe he just got tenure I think oh, okay. as uh, like last year or, I don't know he's amazing um and so I'll be working his lab and he does research on ticks and Lyme disease um so kind of specifically like in ticks which you know Lyme disease is tick-borne so it's transferred by ticks um and so we'll be looking at different pools such as like small rodents and mice to you know kind of scrape and try to find ticks and see which ticks do express the genes that pretty much like determines whether or not Lyme disease is like carried or expressed, you know? Um, so I'm really excited. It also includes a field um, like component to it as well as a lab component. And so for that, what I love is that Middlebury is like an undergraduate only institution, which means that it's only us, the undergrads who have access to do those research opportunities. Um, and I think every department is a little different for how they do it. For example, um, biochem and chemistry, they're a little, they're a little overboard, but they have like one application that they release in January where you apply if you want to have a research position, whether that be in the spring, summer, or fall of this year, like they just do one round. Econ just released their summer positions and it's probably something, something similar to what Jennifer did. Um, a couple of days ago. So if you're interested in like doing a research position, you can read which professor does research in what and how long they want to, you know, have you as a research assistant ranging from four to 10 weeks. Um, and then for biology, you know, the prof professor Dave Allen just reached out and was like, oh, hey, if you guys are interested, like fill out this application. Let me know which classes you've taken, why you're interested in the research, how it'll help you in your classes um or like just general interest so just kind of reaching out like that I think is pretty 
pretty easy and it's pretty nice um yeah I think okay so I definitely did not know about this when I first went to Middlebury is that liberal like one of the big advantages that liberal arts colleges students take is research because the the big reason that I did not know about that was that when I first got admitted to Middlebury all I had in my mind was let's go work on Wall Street and so it had nothing to do with research right I mean I just want to get great I just want to yeah I just want to develop like great relationships with my professors um get good grades and then get finance internships and then work on Wall Street so it was like not until pretty recently that I got to know about that and I also did summer research um, in the econ department in the summer that we hung out and how I got that internship was I was taking one of the econ classes called statistics econ statistics with professor summers and we wrote a paper and the professor liked it and so he asked our team to continue working on that throughout the summer so it wasn't like a summer application that i had to submit but more so just like a, a spontaneous thing that happened which worked out pretty well because i didn't have anything planned for that summer anyway until oh no i did i did have another summer internship at uci but i did have a gap period during which i could work on that research paper from that class so it worked out pretty well and then i do remember seeing like the summer applications for after my junior year because i also had a gap period between the end of the spring semester and my internship at the the company that I'm now working at. And so I was just browsing through and then I reached out to one of the econ professors and turns out the professor decided not to uh, not to like conduct the research at all until not until the fall semester. So I was like, OK, cool. Um, but yeah, I think overall the applications were pretty easy to follow. And I think that's something that just happened to me very gracefully. I mean, I, I, I literally did not have this in mind when I, again, when I went to Middlebury. Um, but I think it's something that I think students at Middlebury or other liberal arts colleges would be able to really learn from. I think it happens like very organically, like as you were saying, it's like, if you want to do it, like there will be something for you to do. Right. I think like there's a lot of flexibility uh, with like funding, with dates, and like with what you want to like how about or do you research in. So I yeah. think that's like I think you you've really emphasized that it happens like very organically, and it's not really at least it hasn't been my experience that it's very stressful. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I think you know especially for freshmen and sophomore students who have to build some level experience before they may be qualified to work at a big company or you know kind of go beyond the research industry it's it's like a very tangible experience to get um that i don't think any undergrad would be able to take so easily you know if it's like a big research university like at ucla like i'm i bet or i wouldn't be surprised if there was like a huge competition amongst students mm -hmm. in terms of like which student gets this internship or this research with certain professors mm -hmm. not even just that but even just thinking something simple like ta positions like oh, yeah. at, a big, at a big university like that's only the graduate students and right, right like right. at middlebury like you can ta for like the granted you do well in the course but you can ta for so many classes and it's been a great experience like doing that as well so ta so, and research so uh, accessible which classes do you ta for <laughs> So, I mean, I'm not TAing any, TA for any right now because I'm home, but pretty much I started TAing my sophomore year. So my sophomore fall, I TA'd for the psych stats course. Um, and for that, I had to like, obviously have um, like office hours, helping out with assignments, also help with some of the lab sessions, graded lab reports and some assignments. I also TA'd for the, um, 
cell bio lab course. Um, I had to grade lab reports, also help run some of the labs. Then I have also TA'd for chemistry 103, which is our introductory chemistry 104, which is the second sequence of that. Um, ecology and evolution, which is another um, like biology course. Um, is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. That's yeah, so a lot. total total five courses. Okay, I remember TAing at least two to three courses, and I remember like I could not. I, I I forgot a lot of concepts that I had learned from those classes. I remember like literally taking all my handwritten notes to my office hours, so that whenever <laughs> any student just asked me about a question for like their what's it called problem sets. Problem sets, yes. Oh my gosh. P sets, yes. Um, I would like kind of roam through those notes on good times. That's why Chain is so good because I, I feel like, okay, hopefully you don't forget everything, but it really helps reinforce right. a lot of stuff. And it really it's really helpful because I I think we have amazing professors. I haven't had a I've had one, but you know, uh, they have their own like, you know, issues going on. But pretty much professors are really good and they're really good at explaining stuff. But sometimes I think it's helpful to hear from another student, kind of their thought process, how they approach yeah. problems, things that they use to remember things. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's really helpful. And so yeah. being able to be a TA, like also reinforces that for yourself. So mm -hmm. it's good. So I know back in the day, I, not that I'm, it's, you know, too far away from my graduation or whatever, but I remember when I was a student in econ classes, I would go to my professor's office hours and like get their feedback, like get their suggestions. Cause I found them to be honest, more tangible and like more impactful than mm. students office hours. So I would consider the mm. student office hours to or student TA's office hours to be like supplementary to the existing professor's office hours. And it's actually pretty fun to like go to your professor's office and like kind of yeah <laughs> it's so good because like, also you can just you just build that relationship with them i will say maybe you just had some pretty not so good tas i'll be honest like there are some people like for one of the courses i ta'd for we had different tas for different sections mm -hmm. and there were some tas who like did not do the assignments they they were like late to meetings they didn't really understand what was going on so i think mm -hmm. unfortunately like there are some people who aren't the best TAs, mm -hmm. but for the most part, like, I'm, I'm sorry, you got stuck with like a sucky one, <laughs> but it's <laughs> nice that the professors are always, it's not like, let me, let me clarify. It's not like you have to meet with a, the TA, you know, mm -hmm. the professor is always available. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's very good to, um, to remember as well. Yeah. And I think when it comes to like building relationships with your professors or anything, it's always important to be proactive. And so I remember sending an email to my professors like, when are you available for office hours? You know, what if I can't make time to their set office hours, right? Because of my own personal commitments and professors at most part would be able to be flexible. And that's something that um, I really appreciate. Yeah, and you'll often see, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. sorry. Oh, you'll often see that like professors when they have on their syllabus or like on their webpage with their office hours is usually like a set date and times, but then it'll often say like, or by appointment because they understand that people's schedules don't always provide the flexibility to meet with them when they are available. Mm -hmm. So it's come, it's happened where like, I haven't been able to make certain office hours because of my own office hours or of other like academic commitments I've had. Um, so it's definitely so accessible to email um, the professors, just meet up with them. And oftentimes it's happened where a professor is like, oh, yeah, like around this time, I usually go out for like a walk, like feel free to join me. And so we just go yeah. out for a walk and just kind of talk about stuff. So it's That's it's cute. nice to have that flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And like, you know, these relationships go further beyond your college years. I mean, I guess I'm a living embodiment of <laughs> this because. I I had a call with one of my math professors just last weekend and we were catching up and it's just nice to nice to like still keep in touch after college and I think that's something that's pretty vital um, in your growth I mean especially if you meet someone meet a professor who was pretty much your mentor 
um, almost your whole college years, like there's no reason to stop it just because you graduate. So yeah, I that's think that's sure. something that, you know, Middlebury or other small liberal arts colleges have um, that's beneficial. Yeah, no, for sure. Also, we just, we, we love Alex. Like he's awesome. I sent him, <laughs> I, I haven't had him, like the last time I had his class was over two and a half years ago. And oh, I yeah. like the final project. So even though I took a gap semester last fall and mm -hmm. I'm taking the semester off, Middlebury has three terms. So I did go back <laughs> for the winter term because there was a topic in reproductive medicine course that I want to take with my advisor. And the final project, I decided to have like data visualizations mm -hmm. of changes in like fertility rates. Um, and so I use like R and shiny to create a shiny app. And I shared that with Alex. And I was like, hey, Alex, like, thank you so much. Like, I've learned so much in your class, even though it's a tough class for me. I struggled. But it's like, I still put into practice the tools and the skills that I learned. And, you know, he was like, oh, it's so great to hear from you. Like, it's yeah. awesome to see that you're still like putting in the work for that. Was a class that was tough for you statistical learning? I haven't taken that class yet. I'm planning to register for that for the fall. Wait, so then what's the what's the class that you're suffering from so much? Data science. I Intro to data science? Yeah, I struggled so much. That with was that. the one that you got a yeah. got that grade for? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, hey. You don't have to say that great. I got a C. It was it was not good. It was not good. Oh wow. for viewers, for the viewers, okay, like it's fine to have a scene. Like, you know, no, it's fine. You, you you don't need to have perfect grades, but that was pretty much like that and my Chinese classes, the only classes that I've gotten below like a like a B. I'm like, oh, it was it was a struggle. But sometimes the classes that you feel get a lot of fulfillment from and that like you learn so much in. Sometimes they're not the easiest classes and maybe it's easier for some people like Jennifer, but it's hard for people like me. Um, but I, I'm happy to say that it hasn't like deterred me and to the point where I'm planning on registering for the second sequence of that of that course, Intro Data Science and then Statistical Learning. So I'm planning to take Statistical Learning in the fall. Okay, that's um, I'll be even more tough, just a heads up. Oh no, I know that. I know that. But <laughs> I've been wanting to take it for so long and I haven't yeah. been able to register for it. So yeah. I'm really, really excited. Is that with Alex? I don't know. It'll I I I think Professor Cartman has been teaching it the past two semesters. Mm. Um, but last I checked, they didn't have uh like a instructor designated for that yet. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Those are good times. I remember when I was taking statistical learning, I was in Germany because it was right when COVID hit and we had to stay mm. home. And so I remember staying up, well, I mean, pulling an all-nighter, I think a few days a week because I had to manage my time zone difference. I had to work with my group members, but I think it all pretty much worked in my favor because because there was a time zone difference, I could pull an all-nighter. You know, if it wasn't, yeah. I would have, I don't know how I would have um, survived in that class, but I honestly think I do resonate with you on the fact that, or on the statement that, you know, some of the most impactful lessons or classes may not be so easy. And I yeah. think, okay, let's talk about grades. So, you know, it's not, I, I always had thought that getting A in all of your classes was easy at Middlebury. You know, like as long as you put your effort in, it's gonna be great. But then, you know, it turns out it's not really true. And one thing you have to consider, I think it's a great inflation. The fact that Middlebury doesn't have great inflation is I think yeah. that's pretty fair, right? Cause you know, in yeah. other colleges or schools, they have great yeah. inflation. And then there was like this whole deep of highs and lows like it's pretty polarized mm. um and so i mean my gpa to be honest is pretty mediocre <laughs> i still <laughs> got my honor so it's good but yeah i think i think you know grading system is pretty fair at mm -hmm. what do you think yeah i think it's pretty i think it's pretty fair um like obviously there's certain courses that are like tougher than other ones and it depends on like if you're more like quantitative 
mm-hmm. as like as, as a student those are things that you like or if you're more like qualitative or you're more into like writing or English and stuff like it's it'll be tough for certain classes especially since we have distribution requirements to mm-hmm. try to encourage students to take things that are outside of their majors and stuff um but yeah I, I think it's pretty fair I think I think it is a pretty fair like I haven't gotten a grade where I'm just like oh I deserve so much more than that I'm like no <laughs> like yeah, that's right. that's that's about that's about right <laughs> yeah because I, I do think that we get our grades based on the level of effort and time that we put it um yeah and that's not to say like maybe okay let's, let's, let's assume that b no let's assume that c is not okay no 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 d is not a good grade <laughs> yeah i would say that's probably not the best um, and I, I think i think it's tough because like when you break down so pretty much like my, the courses that I've taken can fall into one of four categories, either for my uh, molecular bio biochem major, econ major, my math minor, or Chinese. Um, mm-hmm. And like, when I'm looking at like my GPA for each one is like, oh, so for like econ, I have like an A minus GPA. Mm-hmm. And then for M, like molecular bio, we just call it MBB. Uh, for MBB, I have like, a high B plus, low E minus. Okay, that's not bad at and all. then for math, I have like a C plus, B minus. <laughs> like it's tough. Okay, it's tough. saying it so softly. Be confident. It's it's <laughs> tough. It's like a B minus because it's like uh, it's it's like um because it's like calc two, linear, multivariable, into data science, and then I want to take statistical learning. Mm. Um, yeah. So those those were definitely a lot tougher. And then for Chinese, I have like a B. Okay. Um, and so kind of like looking at that, I'm like, wow, no, I definitely see. And like, I know what I'm a little bit stronger in. And it's, you know, I have some people are like, you know, why do you keep on taking math classes if, you know, you're not doing like the best? But if you think about it, the math major as a whole has like the lowest GPA average and it's at about a B minus. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's pretty on par and it's just, it's just tough. It's just tough, but yeah. it, it feels like really fulfilling. And you have so many applications, like things that I learned in multivariate calc, I applied into microeconomic theory. Like when you're talking about like the Lagrangian, um, like deriving that or finding the Lagrangian coefficient and stuff. And that's what I truly love is like the way that you can impl- uh, like implement theories and math and skills in, from math into other yeah. um, like departments and courses. Yeah, I agree on that too. I was taking language classes literally every semester until I think the last semester because I realized like I basically know these languages Mm. conversationally and it's more just like improving them, right? Yeah. I transitioned from German to French and then French was kind of getting too hard and I was, I kept thinking to myself like, where am I going to be using this language unless I go to a French Mm. country or... I happen to be in a French speaking community, neither of which are applicable even to this day. And so that's why, you know, with juggling with GPA, I decided to stop taking French class. And honestly, like no hard, like no personal feelings, no hard feelings, anything. My GPA improved (laughs) by a bit, like by a small margin. And by not taking that class, honestly, it like, took off a layer of stress that I was having um, just because, you know, I was really forcing myself to learn something that I wasn't super interested in as much as I was interested in like data science or econ that mm. I was doing and minoring in. And so I think it really is crucial to think about what you're going to be taking away. Yeah. And what you time. get from it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. From those classes that you take, because at the end of the day, you might either regret or you might be very satisfied with what you have learned from Mm -hmm. classes and the professors. Um, Yeah. But also that's not to say my professors, like my French professors were bad. They were all amazing. Like they taught very well. Like I really like the education at Middlebury because they, most part, in most part, professors know what they're doing. Um, They really that those students succeed. Like they understand what, um, we're doing in each content, like in each week or each month. And so I don't regret taking French classes, but also at the same time, I wish I had thought a bit more about mm. what 
I would have gained if I had taken another class. That's yeah. the French realm. I can see that. Cause don't, don't get me wrong. Like I, it, it was so relieving. Like I felt so bad. This is back to Chinese. I oh, love it. I like, thought you were going to say the that. Chi- <laughs> <laughs> the Chinese apartment is awesome. Like Wang Lao Shir, John Lao Shir, Du Lao Shir. Like they're all awesome. I love them. Um, strict, but so lovely. We also have like language houses, which, you know, I feel like you have talked about. Um, and like, it's so great having the opportunity to practice it inside and outside the classroom, but it's so much like memorization. And like, I'm not saying it's easy for someone who's a Chinese major. Like it's not like, it's a tough language, yeah. but I think it's a little bit easier when that's like the main thing you study, mm. you know, like taking languages on the side are so like it's it's really um fulfilling like I feel like I use that word a lot but I feel like that's why you want to get an education I feel like that's why you should learn is to have fulfillment yeah um and it's it's been it's been really awesome but it's not my major it's not my minor and it just adds a lot of stress Mm -hmm. um on top of like you know the classes that I have to take to graduate you know yeah um and so when it came so I took it from intro 101 all the way to advanced 301 and when it was time to register for the fall, for the spring 302, it conflicted <laughs> with one wow. of the classes I had to take for my major. And I was like, whoop, like, I guess that's it. Um, granted, I do have plans to go to China post-grad. Um, so I, my language learning journey is not over. And I, you know, I, I see that as kind of another reason why like, oh, I don't necessarily have to take it. I feel like I have a very strong foundation Mm -hmm. that can continue building upon once I like go and have my experiences in China and have that kind of immersive experience but I I I get exactly what you mean especially when it's something that's not exactly as your major or as your minor Um, and it could it could take a lot of time because classes they are demanding they are demanding like regardless what the department is yeah I do agree and well it is pretty common for students at Minabury to take at least one language class. I mean, it's also like one of the requirements, right? To graduate. Yeah. And I I remember when I, just before joining or starting my freshman year, I was taking a placement test for German and I got placed pretty high as an, you know, an advanced class in which besides me and another freshman, they're all just seniors and juniors. And I think learning a language in a classroom setting, it's pretty different from learning a language in like in an immersive setting. Mm. Um, Okay, so let's take, for example, German. I learned German in Germany while I was living there, but I also took German classes regularly at the schools that I had been attending in that country. And I realized when I was taking that advanced class at Middlebury, the writing style is very different like the expectations of Mm. writing like an essay are drastically different from how I used to write back in Germany and you know I was a pretty good student like I was a okay no not student I was a pretty good writer in German I knew how to write but the thing is like my professor would just like mark everything off and I'm just like no way (laughs) um so I guess that brings me to the point that um college classroom setting and a high school middle school classroom settings are pretty different and if you were to learn a language you might as well just okay this is not to discourage students from like not like taking a class like a language class at Middlebury but I think it's also important to think about like how much you would benefit from taking a language class or not yeah I I feel like you know it also it's not the same with other colleges. It's like Middlebury is known for the right. language programs. Like they are intense. And like the claim that they make is in one year of taking an intro level course, like whether that be 101, 102, 103, or just like 101, 102, you're gonna learn as much if not more of that language if you took that same language like in high school, mm. like for, yeah. for four years. And it, it's kind of, it was discouraging, I'll be honest. Um, and it's, it's feedback that the department has taken into consideration. Mm. But for Chinese, for example, like there were people who 
studied abroad at a UWC in China. There were people who have studied Chinese for like six, seven years since middle school yeah. who got placed into 101. Because, no way. Yes, because Middlebury Chinese, I don't know if they changed it, but um, they require you to know both simplified and traditional characters. Oh. And so you would have all these people with, you know, this kind of background and, you know, good level of proficiency, especially conversational mm. in the same class sitting next to like a person like me who has that, who has no background. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so wow. it was, a, it was a little discouraging. Yeah. Um, and the, you know, they're, I mean, and the, the funny thing though, is that it's just as tough for them. Like, obviously you know, there's less, um, is not as much of a learning curve for them because they kind of have some familiarity with the language already. But at a certain point, like it might be easier for them or from what I've heard, it's easier for like the first couple of weeks. But then after like five, six weeks, what they're learning is kind of like brand new because we learn so much so fast. Mm. Um, so I think, yeah, and I don't think it's the same thing for like, let's say Spanish department, um, because I feel like there's not as much, like, I feel like the Spanish is a little easier for a lot of people, but let's say like Arabic, Russian, Japanese, Mandarin, like, you know, don't, don't be discouraged. It can feel a little discouraging, but like the professors yeah. are so supportive. <laughs> it's just, okay, it's this- just, it's just a little hard sometimes. <laughs> It is interesting to, you know, take a class with someone who has at least some level of knowledge and background Mm -hmm. in that language. That's like, you can't help but compare yourself with people. And uh, I hope they did change the system at some point. Yeah. But you go to Middlebury, take a language. It's good. Yeah. (laughs) Try try it out. Try it out. Yeah. It really depends on the language I take too. Um, I intentionally didn't take Spanish because I had taken Spanish literally all of my middle school and high school. Well, I mean, since fifth grade. Yeah, from fifth grade to 12th grade. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I can still uh-huh. speak Spanish. Y- yeah, uh-huh. Je- Je- Jennifer habla con fluidez. Ella sí sabe cómo hablar español. Y eso fue otro aspecto de nuestra relación, es que tratamos de no más hablar español. Right? We did that for like some time where I was like... Un poquito, sí. Yeah, where I was like, you know what? Let's have you practice your Spanish. Only speak to me in Spanish. <laughs> that that was actually very fun. That was actually very fun. How long did that last? Like a week? I don't know. I feel I feel like you tried it. You know, you did put some. Yeah. You did, and then like I speak Spanish. I was like, well, whatever. Yeah. Oh, you know what happened? Funny thing happened last weekend when I was running errands at Ninety Nine Ranch. The grocery store. Is that the new one? Mm-hmm. Oh, they opened. I saw that. I saw one? that they okay. had like a like a big one yeah in San Jose yeah I mean, but I don't like a big grand opening mm. yeah it's a little far but, so I went to the local one and I was like looking for matcha powder and I was asking one of the people working there and then he couldn't speak Spanish he couldn't speak English he, he could only speak Spanish so I spoke in Spanish and then I was like still struggling because I don't think he knows whether there was matcha powder or not so I was like mm. okay, I'll wait for it myself and then at some point he came to me and he was like Oh, like cansada or like novio. I'm like, hold up, what? <laughs> you did not just ask. This is like not professional. And I got freaked out. So I, I just left hurried. Oh no. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's one good thing about learning a language is that you get to know what the other person is talking about. Hey, I'm I'm gonna let you know. I so you know, I do some some like Uber Eats and stuff on like the side, and sometimes I have customers who like because of LA we have so many people like Spanish mm-hmm. comes in clutch all the time but there have also been some people who only speak Mandarin and I'm like oh oh I got you <laughs> I got you no worries yeah so For it's, real? It's, it, it does yeah yeah it comes in clutch comes in clutch okay. and then when they give you the little tip oh nice um but I digress <laughs> I didn't know there was like a Chinese community in LA or was it just like one it was I, I was out so it was San Gabriel Valley oh, it's kind okay. of known for having you know a larger right. like Asian population but specifically like Chinese mm. so it was in Alhambra you went all the way there hey I was running some errands one of the rock climbing gyms that I go to is out over there you go all the way there to do rock climbing 
That's impressive. Well, because they don't have any, uh, uh, for viewers, I'm in South Central LA. For those of you guys who are familiar, we have nothing here. <laughs> we have nothing here. We are, Wait, we are literally of- so, de- we are so deprived of everything. There are no Targets, no Costco, no Sam's Club, no rock climbing gyms, no like regular, like you got to drive for everything. So I'm like, I, okay, uh, might as well. Okay. I mean, I, I remember in the beginning of the podcast, you're like, go Central LA, but I guess not quite. <laughs> we're lacking. We're lacking resources and availability and access. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We really digress. But anyway, your yep, story sorry. is, it's nice to learn or have a language. Yeah. Yeah. And I do remember when I was applying to Middlebury, languages or language programs was were really what I focused on. I really try to like, emphasize that I know these languages like I know Korean English German Spanish and now like a bit of French so you know why not admit me yeah although that's oh, really that's awesome. a full factor of having me as a student at Moberry <laughs> it's nice to have like an international kind of focus and uh perspective I think that that's something that Middlebury tries to emphasize like not only do we have like a international politics and economics program international global studies program but I think that international perspective is kind of it's exercised and it's seen in a lot of departments Um, and I think having that kind of global emphasis and like trying to be like a global citizen is it's pretty good and it's it's obvious here I mean no Um, wonder Middlebury has such a strong connection to UWC right I know yes exactly so for you UWC folks (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we're watching you know apply apply to mid it's a great school we yeah. also like i feel like middlebury loves uwc applicants i have no idea why though is it is there actually something yeah 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 they offer scholarships for like middle like it's for certain schools but middlebury is one of them yeah oh okay 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 that That's same that. davis it's like a davis i forgot something with davis foundation or something like that but they also do scholarships for uh, middlebury summer language programs uh, it's like davis peace scholars called so i don't know i forgot what it's called but they um pretty much sponsor these scholarships for uwc students specifically for the school year and then for certain applicants for summer language programs wow okay well i have no connections <laughs> to UWC. i didn't go to uwc so i was pretty surprised <laughs> when i met like a huge people from that school in different countries I'm like I was in Germany too, but I've never heard of UWC in Germany. It sounds like a really cool program too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I think we shared a fair share of Middlebury stuff. Um, for those of you who are still in high school, thinking of considering, sorry, that was redundant, thinking of applying to Middlebury or, you know, prospective students at Middlebury. I hope this was helpful. Um, yes, and if there's any of you guys who are from like Los Angeles specifically, if you're interested in learning about Posse, mm, uh, I, yeah. I always plug I always plug that in. It's a program that like matches up students. It's like a leadership merit scholarship, and it's with ten major cities. LA being one of them, um, and each city has their own partners. For LA, it's like Northwestern, Berkeley, Tulane, but Middlebury is one of them, and, and it's an awesome program. So. If you are interested in hearing about that, like feel free to reach out. I'm sure Jennifer will put in some contact info or something. Would you like me to put your email address? Oh, you yeah. Or? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Did I assume that? <laughs> yes. Can you? <laughs> you want me to? I mean, or I could just yeah, yeah. put in no. your IG handle to be. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Got it. Um, yeah, I think Posse is pretty prominent at, at Middlebury. I mean, yeah. If, big number of my friends not that I have a, a lot of friends but you know a good portion of the friends that I have are from Posse like from LA from Chicago from New York City I think those are the three biggest cities um yeah. from the Middlebury Posse students so if anyone is as smart as Mauricio or who thinks it's as smart as Mauricio feel free to reach out to him you do not need to be i if, i'm i'm very low 
I just wow. like freaking hard. So if you're if you're a good student, if you love learning, honestly, that's that's probably the basic. If you love learning, like that's it for you. I love school. In case you cannot tell, I I love it. It's awesome. I couldn't tell. Sorry. I <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Mauricio, for having, sorry, for being our guest in this episode. I will talk to you later. Yeah. And also, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm, of course. If anyone enjoyed this episode, feel free to subscribe to this channel because there will be more episodes like this. And like this video and leave any comments or extra questions that you may have about Posse or anything about Midbury that we discussed. All right. Bye.